Hey guys, the name is Chris Barocci. Welcome to Gear Corner. Today, I want to talk about the underdog effect type. The one most guitar players will just forget about, even though it's one of the most, if not the most important mixing tool. Whenever you play live, the mixer guy will use it on your guitar, on the bass channel, even for vocals, everything. If you record something, whether it's just by yourself or with a band, you will definitely need it for each and every track otherwise it will get lost in a mix. I'm obviously talking about compressors. It would be absolutely awesome if you gave this video a thumbs up in case you liked it. And of course, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell if you don't want to miss other videos coming up in the future. And of course, check out the description box for additional infos, timestamps, gear links, etc. This is going to be the compressor I'll use today in this video. This is the Empress FX Compressor Mark II. So they asked me if I'm interested in showing the pedal in a video and talk about compressors. And I was like, oh yes. So let's get over with talking about the absolute basics of compressors. A compressor will make all your super quiet things in your playing louder and all the peaks, the super loud and harsh things, just a little quieter. If you're mainly playing alone without anyone else playing, uh, you probably never felt like, oh man, I wish I had a compressor now. <laughs> because unless you want that squashed Red Hot Chili Peppers uh, under the bridge kind of tone, you don't necessarily hear a compressor. If it's set up right for a subtle thing, then it's just not really noticeable unless you're playing with someone else. And as soon as that someone else is not just one person, but a full band, and it's not even a quiet one, but like a proper louder funk or blues or rock or a heavy band, whatever it is, and you play a clean part, half of your notes will not be hearable anymore. And that's so annoying. It doesn't really have to do anything with you not having control over your picking hand or whatever. Um, I've heard that a lot, people saying like, oh, I don't need a compressor because I know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm a professional. It's like, of course, it's great if you know what you're doing, but still the first thing the sound guy will do, whether it's a studio or a stage, live stage, um, FOH, the first thing they will do is turn on a compressor <laughs> because you will get lost in a mix. Doesn't matter how crazy control you have over your picking, if you play a full-on high headroom clean tone, it's just gonna be way too dynamic. And don't get me wrong, I love dynamics in playing. That's what I blabber about all the time here on the channel, how awesome it is to have an overdrive which doesn't compress your signal too much, to have a, a I don't know, that's why I love single coils because they have more dynamics than humbuckers, etc. I love it, but there's a limit. And if you're not using a compressor and you're using a clean amp without any compression, lots of headroom, you have all the dynamics a clean amp can give you, whether it's a simulation or an actual amp, 
you will probably have issues with those clean parts. Like I remember all these situations playing with back in the days with my metal band, then with a rock band, then with a session band, then with a, a more funk kind of 70s kind of band. And I always struggled with balancing out the single note, the percussive sort of uh, dampened strings and the chords, like the strumming stuff. Because it's just the nature of a hi-hat room clean tone and a guitar that if you strum, it's just gonna be double as loud as if you're picking one string. It's not a big surprise. Six strings versus one string, wow. <laughs> a sudden have a usable volume all across your your clean parts in your playing This is exactly why I'm super happy to have this pedal in the video because this is basically a studio rack compressor in a small format. It sounds fantastic obviously, but it also has all the features you want to talk about if you're talking about compressors. So first of all, here you have input and output. Output is just going to be the volume that comes out of the pedal. That's what most pedals will have anyhow and you'll just read volume or something like that on it. The input knob is what makes this pedal super powerful and versatile obviously too because with this you can decide if it should start to compress already when you just barely hit the strings or just play normally or if it only should react and compress to your strumming for example. So you can set it up in a way that you don't even notice that there's a compressor on if you play your single notes and as soon as you start uh, strumming you have your way too loud part in your clean playing then it kicks in and it compresses pulls back all those strumming parts to make it work in a mix. Extremely nice feature. <laughs> And then there's the mix knob, which is great, first of all, because you can blend in your dry signal all the way to the right, it's compressed, all the way to the left, it's dry, and you can, of course, blend them. That's great because sometimes you want a long sustain and sort of a squash tone, but you don't want to make it sound that artificial or that compressed. Then you just mix in the right amount of dry signal that it sounds natural, and you have the best of both worlds, which is great. And the second awesome thing about the mix knob is that thanks to this, you can use this pedal as a clean boost. In case you don't need a compressor in that song, you just go back to 100% dry and then all of these knobs don't do anything, but the output does. So you can set up the amount of clean boost you want and then just turn it on for boost. And 
and it obviously works great in front of an overdrive pedal or an overdriven amp as well. <laughs> The tone knob is definitely not a subtle one on this pedal. If you go back to the left, like under 12 o'clock, it will boost bass and cut treble. So that's gonna be a radically different sound compared to 12 o'clock settings. And if you go past 12 o'clock, it will make your tone way thinner because it cuts bass and boosts treble. There's a very important term when we're talking about compressors, and that's ratio. With ratio, you can decide how aggressive this compression is. If you have something like two to one, which is on this mini toggle on the left side, that's a very subtle one. That's some compression, you will most probably not hear it. It's just gonna be very helpful with those single note lines, etc. Four to one, which is in the middle, is gonna be a bit more noticeable, I guess. And then the last setting on the ratio mini toggle is 10 to one, which will give you that over compressed, crazy Dynacom kind of uh, squashy tone, which is again, awesome. It's just something that you will have in your face. It's not something you wanna have as a subtle compression, obviously. My conclusion and my thoughts on the Compressor Mark II from Empress. I love, obviously, the pedal. It's as good as it gets. It's a, a super high-end pedal. It has top mount jacks, so that's something I would criticize if these were on the sides. Uh, the first version was pretty big, so it just got better because it's smaller. Obviously, that's awesome. It's not noisy at all, which is very important, of course, because as we know, a compressor will make all the quiet parts in your signal which is which could be hum or hiss or whatever uh, louder and make the guitar playing the loud thing quieter which makes essentially your guitar tone just more noisy so I didn't have any issues, any crazy noticeable um, like hiss change or, or uh, noise issues with this pedal, which is great. I love all the features on it. Some of them are just too much for me because I'm a guitar player, but I would definitely use most of it. And don't get me wrong, if you just want a very simple compressor that works nice, you can get a simpler one, like one with, I don't know, three knobs and that's it. It's probably easier to set up. Uh, the only issue with those, and uh, that includes my, my beloved, I love that pedal, my Wampler Mini Ego. It's a great pedal, it's a small one, and uh, I love it for most things, but I already realized that if I want to have something specific with the compressor, it's not that easy. Like for example, I really wanted to get that David Gilmer kind of uh, another brick in the wall solo tone, which is pretty compressed, but in a, in a very special way, basically. Um, the ratio is pretty high on that one. You need a long release for sure, but you should not go crazy with the attack. It shouldn't be too short, it shouldn't be too long. So uh, it's great to have the separate knobs for those two. And of course, with this, I can decide which pick attack will get compressed and which not. And that's what most of the compressor pedals I ever tried miss. Let me know in the comment section below if you ever struggled with a high headroom, completely clean tone for whichever part in a song or like a full uh, song, whatever it was. I'd love to know because I personally never felt comfortable playing 
clean parts on stage until I discovered how powerful and, and nice compressors can be if you set them up in a subtle way. Meet you down there in the comment section and see you next week in a new video. I'll be back. Bye-bye.